What's up, Linux Warriors? It's your friend and your guy and your favorite creator who lives in your head rent-free, Gardner. Today, we're gonna talk about this. This is the Minis Forum UM700. Just up front, Minis Forum sent me this device for review free of charge, so take that for what you will. I just wanted to let you know that before we get into the actual review. But with that being said, I've put this thing through its paces, so here are 10 things that I think you need to know about this device. Number 10, it's valve approved. Besides being a cute little powerhouse, this device's claim to fame is that Valve recommends it if you want to assemble yourself a Hacken Deck. What's a Hacken Deck? Well, it's a stand-in Steam Deck development kit. Valve says that the UM700 has a slightly better processor, a worse GPU, and the RAM is a generation behind the decks. But they also go on to say that uh, performance on this device is representative of what you'll get on the Steam Deck. Number 9, it ships with Manjaro. This thing comes with Manjaro out of the box. According to Valve, Manjaro is currently the most SteamOS-like operating system out there. We are fast approaching the release date for the Steam Deck though, and hopefully soon thereafter an ISO of SteamOS 3 will become available to the public. While I love Manjaro and it is my favorite choice for desktop Linux, I'd love to see how SteamOS actually runs on the UM700. Number 8 and this kind of is a negative in my opinion, it ships with KDE Plasma. And I understand that the Steam Deck is gonna have KDE Plasma when you switch out of the Steam Deck UI, but I really am not a fan. Repeat, not a fan. And every time I use KDE Plasma, I'm reminded of exactly why I dislike it so strongly. Right out of the box, KDE hits you with this ridiculousness. Like, what is the point of this? Why should a hot corner progressively obscure 60% of the screen? This is the kind of amateurish user experience and absurdly bad execution that I've come to expect from... Anyway, pre-installed software, number seven. This version of Manjaro comes with a few interesting choices of pre-installed software. Besides the aforementioned KDE Plasma, we have a few other choice pieces of software. First is Vivaldi, which, if I'm not mistaken, is yet another Chromium derivative, and I'm really not a big fan of uh, Chromium derivatives, if you haven't seen any of my other videos. I don't really know why I'm so salty this morning, but whatever. Mine actually came with a premium licensed crossover install. Crossover is uh, a paid for version of Wine created by Code Weavers. Um, Valve and Code Weavers have worked on Proton together. It's actually a pretty interesting uh, dynamic here. But the fact that this guy comes with crossover pre-installed, that's pretty cool. Now, I, I don't know if every version of uh, the UM700 is gonna come with crossover installed, but uh, mine did, and I think that's really worth noting here. It also has a custom minis forum theme, but it's KDE, so your mileage may vary. Number six, the specs. Now, the UM700 sports a powerful AMD APU, the Ryzen 7 3750H with Radeon Vega 10 graphics. This is a great option for low res and even 1080p gaming with low to medium specs, but this chipset can actually power three 4K monitors at 60 hertz, and that's quite impressive. All while being relatively silent, sitting on your desk or mounted to the back of your monitor via the VESA mount kit. This mini PC also has quite a bit of RAM, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 dual channel RAM to be exact. Now this RAM is shared between the system and the GPU and 16 gigabytes is enough for pretty much any use case you would want to use this device for. My model shipped to me with 512 gigabytes of NVMe M2 storage. This is an adequate amount of storage for sure, but we'll talk about expansion later. Number five, the IO. Now the IO on this device is quite impressive, especially for its size, outclassing other devices in its weight class like the Mac Mini. The rear of the device has two USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, one HDMI port, one display port, and one 2.5 gigabit RJ45. It also has the 19 volt barrel connector. On the front of the device, there is one USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C port, one Type-A USB 3 Gen 1 port, and a USB-A Gen 2 port. There's also a headphone microphone combo jack, a power button, and a recessed clear CMOS button. Number four, easily expandable storage. So in terms of expansion, yes, you can add a standard 2.5 inch SATA drive to this device using the provided and sadly proprietary SATA adapter dongle. Uh, it really is a nice feature, but the fact that it's proprietary means that replacing it is not gonna be as simple as finding a spare SATA cable laying around. 
However, it is very easy to access the internals of this device, and most of the components are readily available through the top hatch. Just press on these two corners, and it will open up, and then you can access uh, the NVMe drive, you can access the RAM, and there is a compartment for a two and a half inch drive there as well. And that brings me to number three. The expansion bay is easily available. M2 drive is easily accessible. Sodium slots, absolutely easy to access. Pretty much everything that you could want to change out on this device is readily accessible from the pop open chassis mechanism. Uh, and if you want to change out the Wi-Fi, uh, all you have to do is take out the uh, existing NVMe drive and underneath there is another M.2 drive. Uh, or an M.2 slot that you can access to remove uh, and replace the Wi-Fi card. Speaking of which, it's Wi-Fi 5, which is pretty sick. If you're enjoying this video, why not hit that like button? It really helps the show out. You can also hit that subscribe button if that's more your speed. Number two, and this might go without saying, this thing is a gaming powerhouse. Now, it should be noted that this device is not a one-to-one -one drop and replacement of the Steam Deck. The Deck's GPU is better than the Vega 10 graphics in the UM700, and this CPU is slightly better spec than the Steam Deck's. With that being said, though, we threw everything we could at the UM700. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't get um, Doom Eternal to run on this machine, which I thought was kind of surprising. Uh, but we were able to do like some 3D games like Two Points Hospital, it worked great. Uh, also, Dead Cells, phenomenal game. And I think that's kind of the level of gaming you can expect from this device right now. And keep in mind that all of the screen capture you're seeing right now was actually using my AverMedia Live Gamer Portable 2. So gaming performance wasn't competing with OBS for screen recording or CPU time. But number one, and my favorite thing about this uh, Minis Forum UM700 is emulation. This thing performs amazing uh, as an emulation box. It really shines. I mean, RetroArch, you know, you would expect something like RetroArch to work great on this. This has a Ryzen 7 and Vega 10 graphics. So classic emulators are top notch and they're in full force here. But I'm interested in high end emulation. RPCS3, PPSSPP, Dolphin, and Yuzu, that kind of stuff. Even the highest end emulation is fantastic on this device. And it gives me extremely high hopes for what the Steam Deck is going to be capable of. Now, I did run into a few issues when testing Super Mario 3D World on this device. It actually had a similar issue to what was going on with the Linus Tech Tips Forza Horizon 5 issues. Um, the frame rate wouldn't dip, but the performance would dip, uh, which I thought was very strange. And it didn't matter what I was doing in the game or how many enemies are on screen or what geometry you could see, uh, it just would slow down and then it would go back to normal speed, never indicating that it had dropped frames. Very interesting stuff. But then you play something like Metroid Dread through Yuzu and this thing performs like a champ, uh, never dropping 60 frames a second uh, when you're actually in gameplay. Sometimes when it's compiled shaders during a cutscene, uh, you know, you'll drop a few frames, but nothing to impact gameplay I found. Anyway, that's the UM700. Uh, I like this thing. It's a sleek device in a cute form factor, and I'm quite pleased with how well it performs. If you're interested in picking one up, I give it my stamp of approval. I really do love this thing. It would even make a good virtualization server or maybe a PF Sense box. I don't know. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I want to give a special shout out to my patrons and my YouTube members, without whom I wouldn't be able to do this. So thank you. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you want to help support this show, you can use the links below to pledge your monthly support and join the 100 plus other Linux warriors. And thanks. But that's going to do it for now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day and I'll see you next time.